Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are going to get into God's Word. We are going to read from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 43. Now, considering all that we discussed, considering what's happening in the in the last days, the, the new age movement, the AI, the artificial intelligence, the, the threat to our society that we don't really see coming because it's given to us sugar-coated and covered with chocolate, with, with diamonds and sparkles all over it. And, and we know everything that sparkles is not gold Every, or everything that glitters is not gold. So, and everything that sparkles is not a diamond. So we have to be very, very careful, uh, you know, not to get caught up in the world system. Now, Romans 12, I'm going to quote that real quick, and then we're going to go into this. Romans 12 says, Do not, uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And here's the one. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, us being transformed to this world is not solely committing sin. Being transformed to this world is not buying into the fashion and the the sexuality of it all. It is way bigger than that. Being conformed to this world is being conformed and buying in to the world system of doing things. And we have to recognize in the spirit, through the gift of discerning of spirits from God's Holy Spirit that warns us where to draw the line in the sand what not to cross over into. Okay, now we're gonna stop there and I'm gonna get back to Isaiah. That's just my little word of warning. Back to Isaiah chapter 43. And we have to recognize that even though it is scary, even though the things that are happening are life threatening in many ways, They are threatening to our souls. They're threatening to so many things. Some some of you have children, you have to be very careful. But anyway, okay. So in spite of all of the warnings and all the alarm bells going off in the spirit realm and all the little traps and the little snares and the little tricks that Satan is pulling on society, building a virtual tree of of the knowledge of good and evil. And we as human beings are being so caught up in all the dazzle and splendor of it all, and all the convenience and all the ease of it all, that we are beginning to bite of that fruit like Eve did. And we are swallowing it lock, stock, and barrel, swallowing the lie. Well, this is what God says for those of us who are very leery, who are very cautious of what's happening in society now, of this dark era. I'm going to read the the chapter, not all of it, but most of it. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, 
for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let the nations, let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and have showed when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ship. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They, shall, they are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Listen, I'm going to stop there. In spite of all that's being done, there are things that God does in the natural realm and in the spiritual realm that are both totally in sync with one another. Help me, Lord, please. And one of the things I believe we're going to see, we're going to see global events that will take place in nature. There will be areas where it looks like the waters are rising and there will be other areas where the water is receding. And there's a reason God has a design for that going on. I believe the waters, the seas, the rivers, the oceans are going to speak to God's people by their behavior, by what they do. And a lot of people in the world are gonna see it as weird weather events, weird anomalies, weird, <clears throat> just weird things going on that they can't explain. But if we have eyes to hear, I mean, sorry, eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind and heart to understand and discern, we will know that God is telling us that we need to get ready because God will make a highway for his people. And he'll make a highway that no one else will fathom with all the satellites and all of the, all of the uh, surveillance going on. They're not, I mean, surveillance, they're not going to know what they're looking at. 
but we will recognize that God is leading his people to safety. And we have to stay connected, even though technology is trying to divide and conquer us, we have to remain connected, hearing each other's voices, the touch, the human touch. We have to be involved in each other's lives. We have to stay bonded together so that we can always communicate with one another what we're hearing from God. And confirmation will confirm confirmations, which will confirm further confirmations that God is speaking. And it will help us get direction to know which way to go. Walk this way. Walk that way. Leave this city. Don't stay here. Don't take your things. Go at two in the morning. Go quietly. You never know what God will be telling us. There will be ways for us to get to safety where rivers used to be. And they won't be there anymore. There will be ways for us to get to safety where roads used to be, where the oceans have covered up and created new rivers, new lakes, new bodies of water for us to jump in some type of rubber boat, river boat, whatever, and get to safety. I believe God is going to use the bodies of water on this earth and the bodies of land that were covered by water that are now discovered or will be discovered and they will both act as highways for God's people. God will make ways of escape in the natural as well as in the supernatural. And there may be dangerous ways that we have to go and God will protect us every step of the way where the normal dangers that would normally hurt other people will not hurt us. I saw a video, thank you, Lord. I really believe God is saying it because he's bringing memories to my mind that I forgot about. I saw a movie about a family. This was a true story. The family got shipwrecked out in the middle of the ocean. And a school of of um pauper uh what do you call these things dolphins yes came and started surrounding them and they were afraid that i believe they were either dolphins or they were killer whales and they surrounded the family was praying they surrounded the family and the killer whales protected them and help guide them they had to stay with the school and they knew that this was their protection and every one of them made it out alive and i believe god will use nature when he says the the stones will be or the beast of the field will be in league or at peace with you i do believe that lions tigers or uh, alley cat, I mean, uh, what do you call those? Cyber, um, I can't think of the name of them, but anyway, the most ver uh, vicious animals will be at peace with us, will protect us from harm, and will help us get from point A to point B. I really believe that God, because there'll be times where we will be able to take authority and, and look at a, a dangerous animal and say, you will not attack me. You will lead me to safety and God will lead you. Now turn and tell us where to go. I, I mean, we have to trust God so much that we will recognize that God's own creation will be at our disposal. We will not be the dinner bell for them, which might be normal in the natural. But God in his supernatural power will create a safety net through his own nature that he created. Anyway, I just believe that we need to pray and ask God to lead and guide us and help us recognize what he has for us because everything about our lives in these next 
10 years, if there are all that many years to come, is going to resonate the presence of God, resonate the power of God, the miracle working power, the vengeance of God, the judgment of God, the mercy of God, whatever he wants us to resonate, we will. So I say to you now, while you're in the preparation stages, while you are in the cocoon, being morphed into what God has created you to be as a weapon in his kingdom, follow him in every way, shape, and form. Do not lean to your own understanding. Do not allow your flesh to take control of any given moment. Put a muzzle over your mouth. Put a helmet over your thoughts. Capture every thought, every wicked imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. At this point, if you cannot take authority over yourself, you will not be able to take authority in the future when we're really faced with some crazy challenges. So right now, your biggest challenge will be you. Your biggest challenge will be your pride, your flesh, your own understanding, your natural tendency to judge others your natural tendency to be intolerant and impatient with one another's imperfections and shortcomings, your natural tendencies to be self-centered, greedy, selfish, full of self, narcissistic in many ways. You must conquer self. You must conquer the devil. First, you conquer self. Second, you conquer the devil. Thirdly, you take authority over everything that God places you over. You must. Because that, I believe, I, I'm not trying to sound poetic, but therein lies the power you will uh, accumulate to be able to to, to wield your spiritual weapons in the future when you're faced with things that you've never been faced with before. And because you have used your authority and exercised your power and dominion that God gave you, you won't think twice when you have to do it with big stuff. So we have to first conquer self, second conquer the enemy, and thirdly conquer our, our surroundings and circumstances. And God will begin new levels, new devils. He'll take you to new levels, new levels of strength, new levels of power, new levels of understanding, new levels of discernment, new levels of authority, new levels of strength. I mean, it just goes on from power, from glory to glory, from strength to strength. You must exercise every single thing that God is giving you so that you can be ready for the onslaught that's coming. And you won't shrink back. You won't turn tail and run. You won't tuck your tail between your legs and whimper away at the first side of trouble. The same way that the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace, you must walk forward boldly. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the, of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. 
Walk on through that wind. Walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown, walk on, walk on with hope in your heart. And you'll never walk alone. Always remember God is with us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we are not alone. And everything that God has given us dominion over, we must take authority. We must take advantage of every, every advantage, every benefit God has given us so that we can make it through this dark age safely, totally unscathed, with not even a scratch, not even the smell of smoke on our clothing. God bless you. God bless you. And as you prepare yourself to be God's witnesses, learn, 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 learn at Jesus' feet. Read that Bible. Read the miracles God did. Let your mind go above and beyond some of those miracles and create some of your own imaginary miracles because God told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, that have I given you. So you have to allow your imagination to see. You must be far sighted in the spirit realm. You must be far sighted when it comes to faith and expecting miracles and powerful wonders from God. If you can see it, you can receive it. God bless you. And I hope that encourages you. And I hope it, it empowers you to walk through this dark age. Because I'm telling you, we're going to need some power. We're going to need some faith. We're going to need some authority. God bless you.